A disturbing new report is shining a light on anti-black racial profiling and discrimination by Toronto Police. The Ontario Human Rights Commission analyzing data from 2013 to 2017 and finding that black people represent almost a third of all charges in the data set, despite making up only close to 9% of the city's population. The OHRC says anti-black racism can have a damaging impact on an individual's education, employment, and housing. Black people are more likely to be charged, overcharged, and more likely to be arrested by Toronto Police. And black people are more likely to be struck, shot, or killed by Toronto Police. When new policies, procedures, and or legislation are being developed, these reports matter. Or when judges are making decisions, reports like this matter. Toronto Police responding in this statement, quote, This important work is an acknowledgement that transparency and accountability are critical in building and restoring community trust and engagement, adding that more work needs to be done. Meantime, the SIU says it will begin collecting race-based about collecting race-based data about complainants and officers involved in their cases. With four weeks until school begins, the province continues to face backlash over their reopening plan, which does not cap class sizes in younger grades. You know, I think our plan is premised on ensuring that we put every single uh, protocol in place to de-risk the circumstance. Smaller classes or classrooms, including myself, I, I fully understand. Uh, but there's always the requirement, I'm, I'm not going to be putting kids in strip malls or industrial buildings, that, that's for sure. The Toronto District School Board begins a telephone survey today to see how many parents will actually send their children to class in September. A mother who started a petition for smaller class sizes, now with over 200,000 signatures, spoke out at Queen's Park. We have Premier Ford and Minister Lecce insisting that our current plan looks to the advice of our experts, such as the experts at Sick Kids. Well, in fact, the experts at Sick Kids, in their most recent report on reopening schools, stressed as a priority recommendation that we must reduce class sizes for a safe return to school. But what more have we learned about children and COVID-19 since Sick Kids released their report close to two weeks ago? Coming up at 6.30, I'll be getting the latest research from a pediatric infectious disease specialist. One of the men convicted in the Boxing Day killing of teen Jane Kreba 15 years ago has been denied uh, in full parole, denied rather day and full parole. Jarell Simpson Rowe was one of four people found guilty in the teen's death after she was caught in the crossfire of a gang shootout on a busy street section of Young Street. The parole board said Simpson Rowe, who's now 32, is at a high risk of violently offending and he's allowed out on day parole or full parole. Kriba was out shop shopping with family on Boxing Day, December 2005, when she was killed. Members of the federal Liberals will face a grilling today when an ethics committee reviews the government's ill-fated decision to have We Charity run a student grant program. The House, the House of Commons Ethics Committee is scheduled to hear from ministers of youth and employment as well as Ian Shugart, the clerk of the Privy Council. Prime Minister Trudeau and Finance Minister Bill Morneau are under investigation by the federal ethics commissioner after failing to recuse themselves from a vote over the deal with WE, an organization they're both connected with. No surprise here, a new Lege poll says 90% of Canadians who took part in the survey objected to Donald Trump slapping a tariff on Canadian raw aluminum. Not a popular decision with Americans either, with 58% of respondents saying they disagree with the 10% import tax. Trump says the tariff comes after Canada broke a promise not to flood the U.S. market. But Deputy Prime Minister Christian Freeland denying the claim and firing back with $3.6 billion in tariffs on American items that contain aluminum. The survey was conducted August 7th to 9th among 1,513 Canadians and more than 1,000 Americans.
Ottawa police have opened an investigation after someone went on a tie ride yelling obscenities at staffers of Canada's infrastructure minister. I don't go to work every day and bust my for this to steal our money. You're all scumbags. Video posted on social media shows what happened outside Catherine McKenna's Ottawa office last Thursday. It's the second time McKenna has been the target of political attacks. Her constituency office was vandalized during the 2019 election. She says she's concerned about the increase in threats and violence against politicians everywhere. What we see in other places, including south of our border, we don't want it to continue here. In another example of politicians facing threats, President Trump is whisked out of a press conference yesterday after a shooting just outside the White House perimeter. Secret Service shot a man who claimed to be armed. It's not known how badly he was hurt. The president returned to finish up his media briefing. Lots of talk about the upcoming school year this morning here on BT. As mentioned, our pediatric infectious disease specialist joins us at 6.30. And then after that, the new challenges around busing kids to school and how the organization responsible for it plans to adapt the service.